Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Big changes in the weather. It's warm t-shirt weather today and no more snow. The day after we got all that snow, the weather started getting really cold, minus six degrees at nights. So I thought I better not risk the trees in the greenhouse. So I brought them inside for two nights. And now today I checked the long range forecast and it looks above freezing for the next two weeks at least. So I'm bringing all the trees back out into the greenhouse. The first stop for the trees is my cleaning station here where I put the trees on the turntable and I spray them down with soap and water, check them over for insects and just give them a general tidy up. I finished cleaning my chiflera that's growing in a 3D printed pot. I just have to give it a good rinse off and then it can go in the greenhouse. The next tree that I'll be cleaning is my willow leaf ficus. I'm just having an inspection of it. Uh, I don't see any scale insects. The tree looks healthy. There's shoots growing up all over it. I will give it a spray with soap and water and then rinse it off and then it can go in the greenhouse. All right, here I go with the soap and water. Just wanna spray all around the tree underneath the leaves, above, just like that. And you just let it sit for a little bit and then rinse it off. The mixture I'm using is 40 parts water to one part liquid dish soap. So now I can rinse it off. And again, you wanna spray it from all directions underneath and just get all the soap off the leaves. And you should always test this mixture on your trees to make sure they can, you know, stand the soap and water. Some leaves are very sensitive and they just curl up and go brown right away. But most ficuses are quite, quite good with the soap and water mixture. Okay, so the ficus is also ready to go in the greenhouse. Before I bring the camera into the greenhouse, I'll wrap it in a plastic bag around the camera to keep the humidity out of it until it warms up to the same temperature as the greenhouse and then I can open it up and it won't get condensation all over the lens. So here I go. I've had the camera in the greenhouse here for about five minutes. So I'll take the plastic bag off and we'll see if the lens fogs up or not. Hopefully it won't. It looks like the camera is not going to fog up. I brought out a lot more trees than I originally had in the greenhouse here. I didn't want to bring out too many at first in case we did get a cold night and we did. So I you know, had to bring them back in and then back out again. So I didn't want to fill the whole greenhouse with plants because it would just be too much work bringing them back into the house and back out again. So I kind of just brought out a few of my uh, trees that I thought would like a bit of sunlight. The big change in here today is I brought my fan out into here. This is the fan that used to be in the plant room and it's really keeping it nice in here. It's stirring the air up, providing a nice breeze over the leaves. You can kind of see them waving in the wind there. The temperature is 31.6 degrees Celsius, which is really good for a hot day. And the humidity is 85%. So it's pretty tropical in here. It feels really nice. You see the sun's high up there in the sky. And the water condenses on the outside or the inside of the plastic here. And every time the wind comes and you know, moves the plastic, it kind of starts raining in here. So it is like a rainforest in here. It's really nice. So the tree I'll be working on today is my Brazilian rain tree, speaking of rain, and it's down here. And it has grown tremendously. I just can't believe it that how well it's grown. And uh, so it's getting quite wild looking and uh, needs pruning. So I'll get it outside on the bench and we'll, we'll start with that today. My goal for this tree is to style it in a big umbrella style with the branches almost reaching the ground. I'll show you some pictures of that.
It'll take several years to grow a big canopy on this tree. And today I'll be reducing it back, making it a smaller canopy. And then each year I'll let that canopy grow a little larger until it's the right proportions. I've got the Brazilian rain tree on the turntable and I'm having a look at it. And I'm not sure I might change the front. Uh, and I may even prune off this back branch. I, uh, I didn't expect the tree to grow so well. Now, I'm trying to think, you know, how high do I want that main trunk before the canopy that reaches the ground? And I probably do want it higher, so probably up to kind of like this division up here. So I don't think I want to have that lower branch coming off down here. So that may go today. I'm going to start by kind of pruning the profile, so I'll have to put my hand in front of the tree and kind of, you know, make a rounded shape to see about where I'm going to prune it. I'm looking at the rain tree from the front now, and I'm just putting my hand over, and most of the branching starts about here, so I would probably want to prune it off just above that point, and then grow the tree, you know, a little larger each year to get that eventual canopy and the branches to weep down. Yeah, it'll be a, a fun project. So I'll start by just kind of clipping back the long shoots to get a rounded canopy. All right, here I go. So I'll just prune each branch back, shortening it to, uh, you know, one or two leaves. There. Using directional pruning allowing a bit of room for dieback. Kind of pruning halfway between the nodes. That's roughly got my rounded shape now. There's a lot of branches kind of crisscrossing each other, growing in towards the center of the tree and you know branches in bad places that I'll have to sort out. There's a branch here that kind of grows straight up and then it crosses over top of all the other branches. So I'll prune that off really short and hopefully something will grow, you know, fanning out from the tree. There's some branches overlapping here. I've got this, I've got like two branches kind of coming off one above each other on this trunk and they're really kind of interfering with each other. So one of those should go. I'll just take you into that area. So it's right here on the trunk. There's two branches coming out kind of like this from the same area and I've got to decide which one is the better branch to keep. Hmm. Now I'm thinking maybe keep the upper one because the lower one if I kept that, then there'd be a kink in the trunk here with no branch coming off of it, and it would look maybe a little funny, I don't know. Let me decide. I've decided to take the lower one off. I think it'll look more natural without it. I'll just remove this sharp, sharp thorn there. And then I can come in and remove this lower branch here. Just like that. I'm down here at eye level, looking at the front of the tree. and. I don't think I need this lowest branch here. I've got my major division of my trunks up here. I don't think I need this small branch under here because, you know, eventually I'll have this big canopy up top and this will just be, you know, shaded out underneath. So I'm going to take that off. I think this tree will end up being a lot larger than I had originally anticipated just because it grows so well. It uh, really surprised me. Okay, um, I've got, this trunk comes up and then I've got two divisions here and a third here, which doesn't look the greatest, the two parallel branches here. So I think I have to remove that, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of nice branching in this area. The only other possibility is remove the middle trunk. But I kind of like that middle trunk because it comes forward. And it's, you know, the natural line. 
So I think I'm going to have to take this one off on this side. I just can't, you'll get a big bulge here if I leave three major branches here. So it's got to come off, here I go. Like that. And I'll just clean this up a little bit. Like that, that's good. All right, so that kind of solves this major trunk structure here. Now I've got to decide, do I want to keep this back trunk? And that's a difficult decision. My idea is to have, you know, the big thick trunk and then coming up and fanning into the umbrella canopy, not to have kind of multiple trunks on the tree. It looks quite good for now, but I'm, I'm trying to think of the future of this tree. And if I don't remove it now, I'll end up with a big scar there that'll take longer to heal. Um, I think I've got to remove it. I do. All right, so here I go. I'm going to come in with the branch pruners. And right about here. Here I go. Just like that. Okay. Now the other thing, I've got a branch that I moved down below here. And I left kind of a stub and I want to clean that up today. So I'll come in here. And just prune that off a little more flush. Like that. Here's what I'm left with now. And it's looking quite nice and flowing except maybe this branch is a little a little low there it kind of comes off a little more horizontal than I'd like I got to take that off like that and then there's one out the back also it has to go it was a twin branch like that now let's see how we're doing looking good There's a branch here that kind of cuts across. It doesn't flow outwards, so I'm going to remove that. Like that. I think it's looking quite good. I've got the start of a umbrella type form that I can create that cascading branches off of and develop the canopy up top. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, taking a step forward for the future. I will try rooting all my cuttings here. So I'll keep them in the greenhouse, I'll stick them in water, and hopefully they'll grow roots. Once you start to see some, you know, root hair starting to grow on the cutting, then I'll transfer it to bonsai soil. I'm going to plant the cuttings now. And I'll start with the thickest one. I wanna make sure there's a good square cut on the bottom. So when the roots grow out, they're not on a funny root plane. I want them on a horizontal root plane, so I'll just cut it off like that. And then I'm going to cut back some of these branches. I don't want to leave too many branches on the, on the cutting. I think that's good, and I'll stick that in water just like that. And then I'll go to my some of my other thicker cuttings. There's one here. I'll just cut it off square at the base like that and that can go in the water like that. You could remove the leaves off if you wanted to but uh, I generally don't because it's going in the greenhouse it'll be nice and humid. This one I'm pruning the leaves back a bit so there's not quite as much load on the uh, on the cutting. And then I'll put that in the water too. The rest aren't very woody. They're kind of skinnier cuttings. I'll try a couple of them, but I don't know. I think you'd probably have better chance with woody cuttings. Okay, I think that'll do. The rest I'll just have to compost. So I'll put this in the greenhouse and it should, you know, the humidity in the greenhouse should keep these leaves alive so they don't wilt and hopefully it'll grow roots in a couple of weeks. 
I was doing lots of work on the truck the other day. I, uh, my goal is to get the underside nice and clean. And, uh, you know, so I was underneath here and it was the worst job in the world. The frame's nicely painted black, but the rest of the body was just uh, rust, flaky rust, flaky paint, uh, dirt, oil. So I've been cleaning underneath the truck and painting it. I don't know if you can see the red there, but I'm painting the cab red. I'm gonna leave the frames black and the bed, the underside of the bed. That'll also be uh, a nice red color underneath. So yeah, it's uh, I'm tired of working underneath vehicles that stuff drops down in your eyes and your face. So I want this truck to be all nicely painted underneath. No oil, no grime, just nice and clean. I put a coat of linseed oil in the bed of the truck. That'll protect that from rust. And I got my plywood bed liner down here that is also coated with linseed oil. It's a little bit sticky, but it'll eventually dry. It makes a nice, uh, you know, coating that stops rust on the truck. I want to preserve it just the way it is, kind of freezing it in time. I've also begun cleaning the engine bay, painting up any spots that are missed, and just kind of, uh, you know, getting it all looking spiffy. I got a lot of work to go. The engine's got a lot of oil on it here and needs a lot of cleaning, but I'll get there. Slowly work away at it. I'll put the Brazilian rain tree in the greenhouse and then we'll get our tamarind seeds planted. Last time we visited the tamarind seeds, I had soaked them and they weren't swelling up at all. So this time I scraped the seed coating with a file and I soaked them and overnight they just swelled up like crazy. So you can see them in the water here. They're great big swelled up seeds now. So it's time to plant them. I'll put a layer of bonsai soil in the seed tray. I'll wet down this layer of soil and then I can plant the seeds on top of this. And then I'll cover them up with a light layer to just kind of bury them in the soil. That should be good. I can hear it making that noise, absorbing the water. Hear that? Cool. Here's my seeds now. Remember before they used to look like teeth? Now they look like gross. <laughs> kind of plump seeds. So that should work quite well. Better than, uh, you know, if I hadn't uh, scraped them. Yeah, they look good for planting. So let's get them in the soil now. All right, so I'll just... Now, I don't know which way to place the seed. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a, a pointy end or a round end or... Okay, so it looks like they hang from the tree this way. There's a bit of a stem sticking out this side. So I'm going to put that facing upwards. So the, the rounded part of the seed will go down into the ground and the pointy end upwards. Try that anyway. I don't know if it'll work or not. but That's the pointy end. I'll just kind of plant them about that far apart. I'll put some in the opposite way just so I know which way works and which doesn't. So there's the pointy end. I'll put the rounded end down. Yeah, they're quite quite slimy now. They don't look like teeth at all anymore. And I'll keep these seeds in the greenhouse. Try and keep it nice and tropical. The temperature will go down at nighttime but I, I still have the heaters in there, so I can always put that on and keep it, you know, a little warmer. I've got all the seeds planted. They're a little close together, but I had lots of seeds, so I thought I might as well use them. 
I still have like half a bottle left over. So now I'll put a covering of soil on top and then water them thoroughly. All right, here I go covering them up. I'll give the seeds a good watering now. I've got my tamarind seeds all planted. I'll put them in the greenhouse and we'll do today's update. Today's updates are my guava trees. In the last video on my guava tree, I did a uh, Hail Mary cut on the one branch here. You can see it right here. And from that branch, I've got three new shoots. So it worked really well, cutting back into old wood. I got a multi multitude of branches coming out now and I can choose my best ones for the future. So that worked really well. So now I would feel confident about maybe, you know, cutting another one back to here and getting a big, you know, all kinds of branching coming out of that old wood. So yeah, I imagine you could trunk chop these anywhere and you get new branches forming on the, on the tree. So yeah, so it's doing really well. I'm going to move it out to the greenhouse today continue its journey as a bonsai tree. The other guavas are my seedlings. I haven't updated these for a while. They haven't, I mean, they've grown and there's the odd branch that's died and maybe some even the trees have died, but uh, the ones that are alive are doing well, still growing. I just keep pruning them off and they're, they're starting to kind of get a bit of a trunk to them. So I think it's, you know, it'll be time this summer to get them out of this small pot that I made and get them into a, a proper training pot and get the root system going and maybe, you know, develop some style to these trees. That's all for now on this beautiful day in the bonsai zone. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for watching.